वेलकम टू आवर ऑनलाइन केमिस्ट्री क्लास आवर टॉपिक इज केमिकल थर्मोडाइनमिक्स लेट अस स्टडी द नेक्स्ट पार्ट एंड इट इज इंटरनल एनर्जी सो इंटरनल एनर्जी कैन बी डिनोटेड बाय यू इन ओल्ड सिलेबस इट कैन आल्सो बी डिनोटेड बाय ई सो व्हाट इज इंटरनल एनर्जी एवरी सब्सटेंस इज एसोसिएटेड विद अ डेफिनाइट अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी that energy is called as internal energy you mean time question may be asked define internal energy so you try this definition then this internal energy of a system is made up of, of two types of energies that we already known potential energy and kinetic energy of that particles of that system so if u1 and u2 are the internal energies of your system at initial state and final state then how will you calculate the change change is always calculated by final minus initial so u2 minus u1 that is delta u is the change in internal energy and remember that internal energy is a state function and it is the extensive property so the value of internal energy is always depends on initial and final state and not the path so it is a state function then if we change the amount of substance then its value get changed so it is a extensive property now next is a transfer of energy it is in the two form heat as well as work any one out of them from the system would change its internal energy so if we calculate the delta u that is change in internal energy energy should be supplied or sometime it will be removed so if it is supplied then we can denote it by plus q sign and if it is removed then minus q so it should be monitored then this energy transfer to the system by either by heating means plus q or it can be denoted by performing work on that system means plus w as heat is added to the system or opposite way is energy transfer from your system to the surrounding by cooling it or by doing the work on that surrounding so heat is removed from the system so transfer can be done either by these two ways and the following are some examples for explanation the above two terms so if let us suppose 30 kJ of heat is supplied to the system supply means it is added so q is plus means internal energy of that system increases so delta u is plus plus means added or increase if second condition is if 20 kJ of work is done on the system work is done on the system means again w is positive so delta u is also positive so internal energy also increases in this case also suppose third case is a system releases 10 kJ of heat release means minus so q is minus minus 10 kJ and perform 15 kJ of work on the surrounding by that system so again w is minus 15 kJ so the how much quantity of internal energy is decrease it is Minus ten, minus fifteen. So delta U is equal to minus twenty-five kilojoule. So how do you write? Delta U is equal to sum of that heat if it is supplied to that system and work is done on that system. So delta U is equal to Q plus W, and this can be. proved by the 
law and that law is called as first law of thermodynamics first law of thermodynamics there are different statements of first law of thermodynamics and this law is related to the total energy of that system and surrounding remains constant so main time question may be asked write the different statements of first law of thermodynamics so three statements are given in your book so you have write any two if it is asked for one mass so one statement for half mass so what is the first statement energy of the universe remains constant energy of the universe remains constant then total internal energy of an isolated system is also constant total energy of an isolated system is constant then energy is neither be created nor be destroyed and it can only converted from one form of energy into another form so third statement is familiar to you so all these statements are equivalent then to write the mathematical form of this first law of thermodynamics so main time question may be asked related to this write the mathematical statement of first law of thermodynamics then don't write the previous three statement you have to write mathematical equation so a system exchanges energy with its surrounding either by transfer of heat or by doing the work so as energy supplied to the system its internal energy increases on the other hand if we remove the heat or work is done by that system then its internal energy decreases so two conditions are there if we supply the heat and work is done on that system then internal energy increases and if we remove the heat or work is done by that system on the surrounding then it decreases the internal energy so for simplification let us suppose that q is the heat supplied to that system and w is the work done on that system by the surrounding then its internal energy increases so remember the sign conventions for work done if it is done by that system then it is minus and if work is done on the system then it is plus so increasing this internal energy of the system is equal to sum of the quantity of heat supplied to that system and amount of work done on that system so delta u is equal to q plus w here internal energy increases because we supply the heat to that system and work is done on that system work is done on that system so delta u increases so what is the mathematical form of your internal energy delta u is equal to q plus w if this change is very very small change in internal energy is very very small that is infinite symbol small then we use instead of delta symbol we use d d means very very small so du is equal to dq plus dw okay so this is the mathematical form so you have to write all this thing when question is related to write the expression for first law of thermodynamics in mathematical way or write the mathematical equation of first law of thermodynamics then next is first law of thermodynamics for different processes so one more question is there express the first law of thermodynamics for various processes sometimes processes are given or only this question is mentioned write the expression for first law of thermodynamics for various processes then you write the statement of first law of thermodynamics in mathematical form delta u is equal to q plus w then you have to mention different processes let us see first process that is isothermal so iso means same thermal means temperatures so in this process temperature remains constant 
as internal energy is a function of temperature delta u is equal to 0 because delta t is 0 so delta u is also 0 so if you substitute delta u is equal to 0 in this equation delta u is equal to 0 then 0 is equal to q plus w 0 is equal to q plus w or you can write w is equal to minus q minus q means it is released so this indicate that this indicate that w is equal to minus q indicate that work is done on that system on that system by the surrounding is result in release of heat because here w is positive and q is negative so work is done on the system by the surrounding and it results into release or decrease of heat same expression can be written like this same expression can be written like this so this can be written like this or or how will you write above equation so if you write w with negative sign then you can write minus w is equal to q minus w is equal to q is it can also be written like this minus w is equal to q then how will you write here w is with negative sign and q is with positive sign so plus q means heat is supplied and minus w means work is done on that system work is done on that system so heat absorbed by the system is entirely used for doing the work on that system work is done on the system by the surrounding okay so this is the meaning of first so I'll make highlight so W is equal to minus Q means the meaning is here release of heat and this is nothing but your previous statement okay I think all of you understood this then in case of next process that is adiabatic process there is no exchange of heat between system and surrounding so q is equal to 0 q is equal to 0 so if you substitute q is equal to 0 then your equation becomes delta u is equal to 0 plus w delta u is equal to 0 plus w or you can write minus delta u is equal to minus w so an increase in internal energy of the system is the work done on it work done on it same can be written like this so or you can write for this statement you have to write or or to write delta u is equal to w okay or to write delta u is equal to w so delta u is equal to w so delta u is equal to w means delta u is positive so increase in internal energy of that system 
is the work done on it because W is positive. So work is done on the system and the minus delta U means decrease in internal energy. Decrease in internal energy is in the form of work is done by that system on the surrounding. So expense of internal energy means by loss of that internal energy or decrease of internal energy. So I think all of you understood. So in case of adiabatic process we write decrease in internal energy. Then next one is isochoric process. Iso means constant choric is related to volume. There is no change in its volume. We have to carry out reaction in closed container. Reaction should be in closed container. So if we carry out reaction in closed container, keeping the volume of that system remains constant. So if we write so all are familiar with that equation delta u is equal to q minus p e x q plus w so w is equal to minus p e x t delta v so as delta v is equal to 0 minus p e x t into delta v also 0 so delta u is equal to q because w becomes 0 so what this equation indicate a change in internal energy of the system is due to heat transfer but at constant volume so that's why this q is written as v as a suffix for q so q v so subscript v indicate that heat is transfer at constant volume so we know that delta uh, u is a state function internal energy is a state function so heat transfer at constant volume is also a state function so i understood this next one is isobaric process bar is the unit for pressure and that's why you have to keep the pressure remains constant but we can't write p e x t is equal to zero okay remember this in the previous cases if we keep that term constant then we write delta v is equal to 0 then q is equal to 0 okay but don't write p e x t is equal to 0 so reaction is carried out in now open container keeping under atmospheric constant pressure so in this case delta v is not equal to 0 so now instead of writing q v you would write q p because now pressure is constant and your delta u is equal to delta u is equal to q p minus p x t into delta p x t into delta v so if we rearrange the equation so your equation becomes delta u is equal to q p minus p ext into delta v if we rearrange this equation our equation becomes qp is equal to delta u plus p x t so if we keep the pressure remains constant reaction is carried out in open container under constant atmospheric pressure then that heat supplied to that system is in the form of increase in internal energy and doing the pressure volume type of work but on the system and it gives a new symbol and that is called as delta h it is called as enthalpy change and that is heat exchange or heat change occurring at constant pressure so q p is also a state function So Q means your heat is not a state function but QV and QP are a state function. So in old syllabus 
small q is used for heat but now it is capital q okay so i think all of you understood all these conditions so question is describe the first law of thermodynamics in terms of various processes okay now next is the enthalpy so enthalpy of a system is the sum of internal energy and the pressure volume type of work energy related to pressure volume type of work so here qp is equal to delta h qp is equal to delta h and qv is equal to delta u so what is the definition of enthalpy it is sum of internal energy u and pressure volume type of work so h is equal to u plus pv if you remember this formula you can easily write the definition so change in enthalpy delta h change is written with delta sign is also a state function so how will write the change delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta v now you have to derive this equation so when you have to derive this equation start with this definition so how to write the change delta h is equal to h2 minus h1 so let us suppose that h1 and h2 are the enthalpies of initial and final state of that system respectively then with the help of this definition h is equal to u plus pv simply write down the enthalpy at initial state that is h1 and enthalpy at final state h2 so write down the subscript 1 for h u and v okay so what you write h1 is equal to u1 plus p1 v1 and h2 is equal to u2 plus p2 v2 then substituting this h1 and h2 in the previous previous term so delta h is equal to u2 plus p2 v2 minus u1 plus p1 v1 so rearranging this what we get u2 minus u1 plus p2 v2 minus p1 v1 so this is the change in internal energy which is denoted by delta u then this one is p2 v2 minus p1 v1 is the change in pressure volume type of work so delta pv we kept pressure remains constant so p1 and p2 means initial and final pressure remains constant that is we write p so it kept outside so p into delta so you have to write this also so this is your final equation delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta u so in your exam you have a question for derive delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta u so how will you write the terms in only so always mention if you derive the equation what is the meaning of that term so delta h is change in internal energy sorry uh, change in enthalpy then delta u is change in internal energy p delta v is the pressure volume type of work now if the pressure inside and outside is same or p ext is equal to p then in the previous expression here we already written qp is equal to delta u plus p ext into delta v that is 
now so if you compare the equation 4.22 and 4.18 delta h is equal to qp because right hand sides are equal to equal in the left hand side okay so thus change in enthalpy of a system is equal to heat transfer from it at constant pressure heat transfer from it at constant pressure so h enthalpy and heat transfer at constant pressures are state functions now one more question is there derive the relationship between delta h delta u for different chemical reactions so or derive the condition for delta h is equal to delta u so our equation is delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta v so first condition is we have to carry out reaction involving solids and liquids so delta v is very very small because the volume of solids and liquid does not changes with change in pressure so if delta v is, is constant or that change is very very small then you can neglect this so delta h is equal to delta u so delta v is very very small so p delta v is very very small so delta h is equal to delta u so this is the first condition then for reaction involving gases delta v cannot be neglected in previous case we neglected because your reactions containing solids and liquid is a reactant or product then if they are not solids and liquid if they are gases then delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta v so what is delta v it is v2 minus v1 so your equation becomes delta h is equal to delta u plus p v2 minus p v1 if we are in this equation where v1 is the volume of gas phase reactant and v2 is the volume of gases phase product so one for reactant two for product now we assume that reactants and products behave ideally now we have to follow the ideal gas equation pv is equal to nrt where n1 is the number of moles of reactant n2 is the number of moles of product then how will write equation pv is equal to nrt write down pressure as p volume as v1 number of moles is n1 r and t are constant so here we keep pressure then temperature and pressure temperature constant r is always constant it is a gas constant so p v1 is equal to n1 rt this is the ideal gas equation for initial state and at final state p v2 is equal to n2 rt so now substituting the equation 4.26 in the previous equation what do we get so that previous equation is delta h is equal to delta u plus p v2 minus p v1 now substitute these values in this equation what do we get delta h is equal to delta u plus n2 rt minus n1 rt if we are in this rt rt is same so delta u plus n2 minus n1 rt and this is the change in number of moles final minus initial so it gives delta ng so where delta ng is the difference between the number of moles of product and those of reactant so what is your final equation delta h is equal to delta u plus delta nrt so you have to derive this expression also so you have to start from which equation this equation delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta v so to derive delta h is equal to delta u plus delta nrt don't prove delta h is equal to delta u plus p delta v okay then next is work done in chemical reaction so work done by the system 
at a constant temperature and pressure is given by so w is equal to p e x t into delta v assuming that external pressure is the pressure of the gas then we can write w is equal to minus p delta v so which is equal to what is delta v v2 minus v1 and if you multiply that pressure to inside the bracket then what we write minus p v2 plus p v1 now if your gases behave ideally then we apply the ideal gas equation so p v1 is equal to n1 rt p v2 is equal to n2 rt so if we substitute these values in above equation w is equal to minus n2 rt plus n1 rt this minus n is remain as it is n2 minus n1 rt and that is delta ng so w is equal to minus delta ng rt so this equation gives the work done by the system because it is negative by the system in a chemical process and this sign of w depends on the sign of delta v so consider the following cases so if n2 is greater than n1 n2 is greater than n1 then delta ng is positive if delta ng is positive w is negative that means work is done by the system if it is negative and if n2 is less than n1 n2 is less than n1 then this bracket value is negative 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 positive so w becomes positive means greater than zero so work is done on the system if w is positive work is done on the system and third case if both number of moles are equal then delta ng is zero in that case w is also zero so no pv type of work will be obtained when number of moles of reactant and products are equal thank you